Upon hearing the phrase dome car, most people think about the great streamliner trains of the North American Silver Age. But North America isn't the only place where you could, and still, can find them. The 1928 consist of the original Rheingold, specifically developed and built for this train, was renowned for the unparalleled comfort it offered. This tradition couldn't be initially followed up upon when the Rheingold was reinstated in 1951 and only refurbished pre-war equipment was in use. But as Germany's economy recovered, the Deutsche Bundesbahn, the Federal Railway of East Germany, saw the opportunity to bring the Rheingold back to its former glory by developing an entirely new set of wagons painted in cobalt blue with beige window bands and black grey skirts, quoting but at the same time modernizing the paint scheme of the original Rheingold. The main attraction of the new set was undoubtedly the dome car, with its prominent glass dome giving its riders the best possible view along the picturesque Rhine Valley. While the dome wagon served various purposes, omitting the need of additional specialized wagons, its main function is not actually the dome, but rather its bar and launch section, which is located in what usually is its back end. As the glass dome is perfectly centered, the only easy way of telling which end is which is by looking at the window arrangement. The bar section has on one side four evenly distributed windows of the same size, but only three windows on the other, giving room for the bar itself. The counter offers three stools, another four pairs of seats with tables are available, as well as a sofa offering space for four further guests. Accessible from the vestibule behind the tavern, is also a toilet. As the tavern doesn't have its own kitchen, it was usually followed directly by the dining wagon orientated with its kitchen end towards the tavern. Another wagon, specifically designed for the Rheingold, which we will take a closer look at in another video. Directly accessible from the tavern is the glass dome, which can be reached via a small stairwell. While the domed middle section has two floors, only the upper one can be accessed from both sides. The dome section is separated from the rest of the wagon by two glazed doors and features 22 seats, of which the 18 in the middle can be rotated to match the respective travel direction. The dome is, apart from its steel skeleton, entirely glazed, with the vertical beams being spaced out at 1 meter intervals. To allow for a good view during the journey, even at dark, this section was only dimly lighted during travel, adding the full lighting only when necessary, for example at station stops. To also keep a comfortable temperature in summer, the glass panes, like almost all windows of the consist, were gold coated to reflect the majority of the heat while allowing light to pass through. As a side effect, this gold coating also blocks radio signals, which however, in a time before handheld mobile phones, was not considered an issue. Leaving the dome section of the wagon towards the other side leads down another short stairwell and into the seating end, featuring two regular compartments with six first-class seats each, a toilet in the vestibule, as well as the Schreibabteil, a small office allowing passengers to send off telegrams or letters. Looking back towards the dome section, on the left side, the hallway side, a fairly short door can be found, which over a couple of stairs leads down to the lower floor of the middle section. The only thing relevant for guests in the shallow and engine room-like floor, however, is the telephone. The main bulk of this floor is taken up by the baggage compartment, which can be loaded and unloaded through the small folding doors at both sides. Additionally, a mail compartment can be separated from the luggage room if needed. And last but certainly not least, the basement features a room specifically for air conditioning, containing all the equipment which is usually placed underneath the wagon floor on a single decker wagon. Like all the wagons of the 1962 Rheingold, the dome cars are equipped with four magnetic track brakes, making them suitable for speeds up to 160 km per hour, which required an exceptional permission, as 140 km per hour was the upper speed limit for regular trains at the time they were introduced. Both boogies are also fitted with a power generator each to allow for an independent power supply. Three examples were initially ordered and built for the introduction of the new Rheingold in 1962 and, opposed to the locomotives, 
delivered in time for the summer timetable, when in 1963 also the Rheinfall was re-equipped with new luxurious consists, two further examples were ordered. They were almost identical to the original ones, with the largest difference being the use of significantly longer glass panels of the dome, decreasing the number of vertical beams dramatically, which were now spaced out at 2 meters instead of 1. The seats inside the dome were now upholstered in beige rather than blue, and the bold Rheingold lettering underneath the dome was replaced by the company name Deutsche Bundesbahn, as the Rheingold was not the only train anymore featuring these wagons. When in 1965 both the Rheingold as well as the Rheinpfeil were upgraded to Trans-Europe Express trains, the cobalt blue paint was replaced by purple red. Later on also the silver painted roofs received the darker umbra grey, which performed much better in hiding grime and dirt. As such they were in use until 1976 when they were taken out of service and replaced by more conventional tavern wagons. These new wagons were very similar in their general arrangement, featuring both a lounge area and bar, as well as some first class compartments and as such served the exact same purpose. But what was dropped without any replacement of these new wagons was the raised dome section, freeing up space for two additional first class compartments, as well as a proper dining compartment, separated from the lounge and bar. The Deutsche Bundesbahn sold all five of the dome cars to the tourist company Apfelpfeil, which repainted them in bright orange with the lower half in yellow. In 1982 they changed ownership again after Apfelpfeil went bankrupt and were now employed by the Swiss tourist agency Mittel Thurgau, where they were painted in similar colors to the TEE livery and labeled TEE Panorama. And by now all of them had a slightly lower dome to increase the route availability. Then, in 1999, they went to the Torkompaniet in Sweden, where they received a vinyl wrap in white and green. In this appearance, they stayed in regular service until 2003. And that is where the five examples part ways, while four of them returned to Germany in 2005, heading to different new owners, the fifth one remained in Sweden a while longer before finally in 2013 going to the Netherlands. Luckily, all of them still exist today, with some of them even still running. Their current conditions, however, range from being restored close to original condition to being heavily modified. It is arguably the most iconic German passenger wagon there ever was, and a staple for Germany's best known passenger train. While their initial service for the flagship trains of the Deutsche Bundesbahn didn't last very long, various other operators saw the value of their uniqueness, helping all of them to about 40 years of regular service, ensuring their survival. It is indeed quite fortunate that all five of them still exist today. Thank you very much for your interest in my art project and your overwhelming support. I hope you enjoyed my video about Germany's only dome cars. Would you like to travel in them? See you soon in my next video here at Steelbridge Models.